Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's my pleasure to be here today at the Mount for an exciting announcement regarding fertility supports for Islanders. I first want to welcome Dr. Megan Keddy, OBGYN, and uh, Ashley London, uh, a, a very, very important part of this announcement. Uh, she's a fertility advocate here in, in the room today and also for uh, all of you watching online. It is not uncommon for individuals and couples to be face challenges when it comes to starting or growing uh, their families. Many Islanders are all too familiar with what a complex fertility journey looks like and the physical and emotional toll that it can take. Many people that I've spoken to on this issue have described the journey as a roller coaster ride, with many ups and downs, twists and turns along the way. As we know, up to one in six individuals will experience problems with fertility in their lifetime, in many cases, leading them to procedures like in vitro fertilization, IVF, or intrauterine insemination, IUI. These services and the associated medications required can be costly and become an added barrier and stress for the individual or couple. Today, I am announcing a new funding program the Fertility Support Program, which will ease the financial burden for Islanders who are accessing these services. The program will provide funding to Islanders who are, are accessing IVF and IUI out of province, at out-of-province clinics and also the medications required for these procedures. The program will provide a minimum of $5,000 and a maximum of $10,000 in annual funding for eligible expenses based on family income. An individual can access maximum annual funding up to three years. Additional details regarding the application process will be made available later this year. I want to thank the various members of the PEI fertility community who have shared their stories and experiences with our staff. It has truly been an extremely beneficial to hear from those who access these types of services, been on this journey, and to identify what barriers exist and how we can best assist you. I'm pleased, extremely pleased, to be moving forward with increased funding supports for people who are accessing these important services. A financial barrier should not block anyone from having a family they deserve. Thank you. And I now want to invite Dr. Megan Keddy to say a few words about what this funding program will mean for Islanders and her patients. We're just going to take a moment to wipe the podium sure. there. Thank you. I'm Dr. Ketty. I'm one of the obstetricians and gynecologists here in Charlottetown. And infertility is something that affects approximately 10 to 15 percent of all couples and can cause a significant emotional and financial strain on their relationships. Well, initial investigations, workup, and treatment can often be done on island for couples that require further subspecialized treatments and care, such as in vitro fertilization or intrauterine insemination, this must be done in subspecialized clinics off island. For those couples, the financial burden can add a significant barrier in terms of starting or growing their family. This program will hopefully allow for more islanders to achieve the families of their dreams um, and to allow them to, to move those goals forward. We're excited to help people when they are looking at their investigations and starting their families here. Unfortunately, in many cases, only about 25% of couples are actually able to go down the road to IVF if that's indicated, with financial barriers being a large part of that. Hopefully, this will allow more islanders to access those services in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. Thank you, Dr. Ketty. Now I would like to introduce Ashley London, a fertility advocate who is extremely dedicated and passionate about this cause. Ashley is the co-administrator of the PEI Fertility Infertility Support Group on Facebook, offering a safe place for Islanders on their fertility journey to connect and support one another. I'm very pleased to have Ashley here today to share some of her story. Ashley?
Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for having me. And as James Minister Aylward has mentioned, my name's Ashley. Um, and I'm an active member of the PEI fertility community here in PEI. Um, in the beginning, we were very private about our story. Uh, we didn't even tell our family what we were going through. So speaking publicly was definitely something that we said we would never do, yet here we are today. Um, over time though, I quickly realized that infertility is a very lonely issue if you keep it to yourself. When I started opening up, it was like a weight was lifted. So if you find yourself where I was, you're not alone. There's a whole group of us that can relate to what you're going through and that, can lean on, that you can lean on for support when you're ready. Our treatment journey started almost three years ago. We sort of knew something wasn't right and decided at the advice of a very kind nurse here at the Women's Wellness Clinic to self-refer to a fertility specialist in Halifax. I'll never forget that first trip home from Halifax after our initial consultation. Devastated, brokenhearted, angry, and probably the saddest that we've ever been. Luckily for us, just days after that initial diagnosis, we were fortunate enough to be able to make the decision to pursue tr the treatments recommended by our doctors. We just knew that if there was a treatment plan out there that might give us the family that we longed for, we had to try it. For us, trying meant two rounds of IVF and countless trips to Halifax. I don't think that anything could have ever prepared us for what we have mentally, physically, and financially endured over the past few years, but there's not much that we would change either. We've not yet been successful, but we are on a new path now, preparing for our third and possibly final round of IVF, thanks to all the wonderful people that we've met along the way. It's been a roller coaster ride to say the least, at my worst, it was agonizing pain, uncontrollable sobbing, and not knowing how much more I could handle. But at my best, I'm able to stand up here and share my story because being able to try treatments is very exciting and it gives me so much hope for the future. Looking back now, I think the only thing that could have been worse than all the heartache that we've endured would have been the inability to try in the first place. So that's where my motivation for advocating for fertility funding in PEI has always come from. A place of wanting to help others. I want everyone to have the chance to feel the hope that we felt from trying the treatment options presented to us by our doctors in those initial days. I am so proud to be an Islander and we are so for fortunate to have a government that recognizes the need and importance for funding these programs. Islanders have been waiting a long time for progressive leadership on this issue, and PEI is literally leading the way. For that, we are very grateful. The past few days, I've put a lot of thought into what my expectations and my goals were when I started advocating. And I guess it's really quite simple. I want all Islanders to have equal access to these treatments. Although we understand the department's logic as it relates to other income-based programs, in recent meetings, our group made it clear that we were not in favor of an income-based model because it wouldn't necessarily be a plan that would work for the majority. Unlike other medical conditions with income-based models, Reproductive health issues are not a lifelong illness. The window for success with fertility treatment is very narrow and timely, and funding would not span the lifetime of an individual. Other conditions that require off-island specialists are paid for through our provincial Medicare system. 
It doesn't matter how much money you make or how sick you are, and we just don't see why access to fertility treatments should be any different. Ultimately, this is what our group will continue to strive for, and today's announcement is definitely a monumental step in the right direction. I want to thank Minister Aylward and the department for all for the opportunity to share my story and for their continued support and collaboration on this issue. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank my husband, my family, my friends for their outpouring support and encouragement. And to members of the support group, thank you. It's an honor to be able to represent you today. Thank you. Ashley, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing and, and being such a strong advocate. Uh, and the reason we're here today is because of you and, and, and your group. So well done. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes the formal portion of her announcement today. I again want to thank Dr. Ketty and, and Ashley for joining me here today and for all of those of you following along online. Thanks very much. Have a great day and enjoy your weekend. <laughs>